ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ once a young boy asked me a question from a college these college students are reading something in the newspaper here and there on the basis of that they establish the wisdom so this boy asked me a question swami ji i have heard your lecture now tell me who am i so i ask him should i tell you the truth or bluff he said for a change tell the truth so i told him you are a fool of the highest order naturally he got disturbed then he said do you mean ramana maharshi was a fool because he has raised this question who am i there is a book of him who am i i said look here he didn't ask me this question you have asked i am replying you i am not commenting on him then i told him <coughs> this question is valid only for that person who has accepted at least theoretically that the embodied is other than the body then only this question is valid when i accept myself to be body this question will not come because as a body i know i am man woman young old so where is the question this question can come only if we accept ourselves to be someone other than the body now take one more example to understand this point <clears throat> in a school some examination was given there are three parts and each pot contains 5 liters 10 liters 15 liters of milk and <coughs> the first second third pot respectively has 2% 4% 8% fat we mix the whole milk together in one big container then the question is what will be the average fat percentage in the collective milk how we will start suppose the average fat content will be x percent and only with that supposition if we submit our answer book will we get uh, marks we have to establish the value of x is it not what is the value of x because x percent is only supposition we have to establish the value exactly the same way when we are told <coughs> we cannot be the body but we are the embodied living through the body then who is this who am i then if i am not the body then we are told you are a soul and we make a soul curry and whole life we suffer as soul 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 hey friends we don't establish the value of soul what is the soul the day you start inquiry about what is the soul you have entered really the spiritual path till then you are only running around to without any direction without any destination <clears throat> see what is this soul normally what happens <clears throat> like we look at this beautiful lightings 
So there are half a dozen. See, there are seven lights in each. There are seven bulbs, not lights. Light is one. Bulbs are seven. Exactly the same way. We are about a dozen of us. Body wise, we are many. Life wise, we are one. See? So, what is life? Life is not one per body. Life is one phenomena. Then what is electrical light in the bulb? Light is expression of electrical energy through the bulb as light. In the same manner, expression of absolute reality through the body as life. So three things. One is the body. Second is absolute reality. And third is expression of absolute reality through the body as life. Life is. Life has no problem. See? If there is some cut somewhere, the life automatically repairs that. You don't have to do anything. In life there is no problem. Problem begins with this non-existing entity. What is this non-existing entity? It is like husband or wife. Man is. Man is like the electrical energy. Expression of man through the bulb of wife is called as husband. Expression of electricity through the bulb is called as light. So husband is what? Husband is a common noun. Any man expressing through any woman as his wife is a husband. Husband is a common thing. See? And who is miserable? This husband who doesn't exist. See friends, exactly the same way. There is no misery in matter, Prakriti. There is no misery in absolute reality, Paramatma. There is no misery in the expression of Paramatma through the body as life. There is no misery anywhere. The misery happens only because of foolishness. See friends, take these few examples, it will make it very clear. When we stand in front of the mirror, so our face, mirror and the reflection in the mirror. If the mirror is corrugated, the face reflection will also appear like that. But has it become like that? Because reflection is merely an appearance. And when the mirror breaks, that time, does anything happen to the reflection? No, because it is not there. Anything happen to the original face? No. In the same manner, neither there is misery in the Paramatma, nor there is misery in the soul. Misery is an illusion. It is not a truth. But when we take this illusion as real, who can help us? See friends. Now go further in the same line of thinking. When one bulb becomes fused, who died? Has electricity died? No. Has light ceased to exist? No. 
then nothing happens. Therefore, it is said, when a candle burns, nothing is lost. Bhagavad Gita says, Avyakta dini bhutani vyakta madhyani bharata avyakta nidana neva tatraka paridevana. The life is a continuous flow of manifestation and manifestation, manifestation and manifestation. Deep sleep is unmanifestation. And waking is manifestation. Continuously going on. Deep sleep in scriptures is called as temporary death. There we are neither man, woman, young, old, rich, poor, nothing. In the same manner, when this body disappears, in fact, nothing happens either to the soul or to Paramatma. This soul curry business to send you to hell and heaven is only to frighten and control you from a distance. It is nothing like soul. This is our essential nature. It is something like this. Vision has no color, shape, form. Same vision, when it becomes grossified, it is called as the objects with colors and forms. Like water has no color, no form. When the water is grossified, into the eyes, it has a color and form. Same way, the vision has no color and no form. When it is grossified, it is called as the object. Hearing ability doesn't have any sound, but hearing ability grossified is called as sound. And so on. Similarly, mind doesn't have any of the five attributes, the sound, the touch, the form, the taste or the smell. Mind doesn't have these five attributes. But the same mind expresses through the sense organs. So mind grossified is vision through the eyes. Mind grossified is the hearing ability through the ears. Mind grossified is the testing ability through the tongue. Pure conscious existence does not have thoughts, does not have modifications, does not have beginning, does not have end, does not manifest and manifest, always is. This Conscious existence is grossified and the grossified conscious existence is called as mind. This is how the whole life comes into manifestation. So what should be the meditation therefore? Tasmatvam indriyani adhoniyam me bharadarshava Bhagavan says in Bhagavad Gita First, have perfect control over your faculties. No color and form, no sound, no taste should enslave us. None of the worldly things and beings should have freedom to influence us. Things we possess, indulge and suffer. Beings we relate and suffer. So no worldly things and beings should have any freedom to influence our sense organs. First step in meditation. He is not only sitting in one posture. Then the second degree meditation. 
none of the sense organs their functional abilities should ever disturb our mind when the eyes lose their sight nothing happens to the mind whether mind was able to express through the eyes as vision or the mind is not able to express through the eyes as vision because of some fault in the structural eye it is not a loss to the mind go one step further whether mind is able to manifest through the body and thereby enliven the body or mind is not able to manifest through the body and thereby not able to enliven the body and the body falls dead will it have any influence on the conscious reality that we are this poise that you are in is not created it is something like the ice cube dissolving in the waters and the ice cube dissolves in the water makes no noise and therefore those who are reaching their own self they become less noisy in their life dukkheshu anudvigna manaha sukheshu vigata spruhaha miseries are experienced but a miserable entity is not born comforts are enjoyed but we don't live in a comfort zone this process what we have gone through is <coughs> the process of dissolving the effect in the cause effects are objects cause are the sense organs so objects are dissolved in the sense organs colors and forms are dissolved in the vision sounds are dissolved in the hearing ability then the second step is dissolve the sense organs which are the effects into their cause the mind so we have dropped the sense organs
Now we dissolve the mind. in the individual intellect up to here it is only theoretical there <coughs> the individuality is still intact i is still valid i have dropped the sense objects i have dropped the sense organs i have dropped the mind but this individual i this is what is called as soul Now, who is this individual I, and how to dissolve him? So the individual I is dissolved in the total I, meaning the devotee surrenders to the Lord. From here. the devotion begins devotion is lord first me later yad yat karma karo me tat tad akilam shambho tava aradhana whatever is done is done for the lord by this public of devotion the individual i dissolves in the total i the god and the ultimate is totality is the cause individual is the effect this illusion of cause and effect also disappears in the absolute because absolute is neither the cause nor the effect न जायते म्रियते वा विपश्ये नायम भूत्वा भविता वा न भूया अजो नित्य शाश्वतो यम पुराणः न हन्यते हन्यमाने शरीरे दिस एब्सोल्युट रियलिटी रिमेंस अनटच बाय द बॉडी द सेंस ऑर्गन्स द माइंड द कॉज एंड द इफेक्ट this is our essential self
eyes are not against any color and they are not impressed by any color sounds are not ears are not against any sound they are not impressed by any sound the mind is not against any thought the mind is not influenced by any thought similarly the consciousness is not against waking dream deep sleep or samadhi it is not influenced by any one of them therefore don't struggle against the thoughts realize that they are happening in you you can't disturb them you are the infinite uncreated being don't become by identification with anything the gross space remains unaffected 
by its contents effortlessly the mind also remains unaffected by the thoughts effortlessly no efforts are involved Kundi recognize that thoughts do not touch the mind. Like waves do not influence the ocean. Similarly, the waking dream, etc. Along with the waker, dreamer, etc., and their experiences do not influence the conscious reality that is. And this is without any effort.
there is never a failure or a success in meditation because we do not get anything what we are to discover therefore there is nothing like good meditation bad meditation successful not successful just open your eyes within three lochanaya that was shiva or use in intuition to live in this wisdom 24/7 is living in meditation avichara kruto bandha vicharya nivarate all the problems are because of wrong thinking correct the wrong thinking by right thinking and go beyond thinking and be happy offer everything at the feet of the lord move your toes and fingers and see again we are back to square one the samsara be om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamunachate purnasya purnamadaya ूर्णमेवाहिष्यते शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुभ्यो नम हरि ओं